Well, here I'd like to briefly review data registers and how they are implemented in LabVIEW FPGA. A data register is an array of D flip-flops that contain a common clock connection. Let's start with a single discrete flip-flop and then add a few more. I'll just draw three, but you can extend this as many as you like. Each data flip-flop or each D-type flip-flop has its own independent connections for its data input as well as its Q output. For example, if we call the primary bus input D, then I can use the bit subscripts to keep track of the individual bits. They all have a common clock, and this clocking waveform is the typical system clock, which is simply a periodic square wave. So the flip-flops are being triggered once every clock cycle. Now let's investigate how this is translated into LabVIEW. We'll notice that we have a while loop structure. And the Q output that maintains the stored value, or we could say the state of the register, is available right here. This little structure that I just indicated is called a shift register in LabVIEW. The D input on a flip-flop would correspond to this end of the shift register. I'm putting together an 8-bit data register in this case. As we go through each iteration of the loop, that corresponds to one clock cycle. Now this is one way to do it. An equivalent method, entirely equivalent, is based on the structure called a feedback node. And that's this device right here. The feedback node output corresponds to the Q output on our flip-flop back here. And again, that's the stored value or the state that's being preserved and that corresponds to this output side of the shift register version. And over here we have really the uh, LabVIEW version of a flip-flop. So it looks very much like the D flip-flop schematic that I was just drawing. Now you can include many more flip-flops in the register by using the Boolean array data type. This initializes all of the flip-flops to a low value or the false value. We can think of this as being the same thing as the power on reset value. In this case, since I have eight constants associated with the array, we have an 8-bit bus. And again, the feedback node version appears like this. Now the initializer terminal Sometimes it's associated directly with the feedback node, but as I'm showing in this case, it may be separated and placed on the side of the while loop. Now the same 8-bit register can also be expressed using the integer, and more specifically the unsigned 8-bit integer data type, and that appears this way. So we initialize this with a zero constant. It's data type is unsigned 8 bits. So we really think of the integer now as being an 8-bit bus with the additional interpretation as an unsigned integer being tacked along. And again as before we can do the equivalent version with a feedback node Again, this has the advantage of looking exactly like the D flip-flop schematic.